And welcome back. Well, our next guest is leading an interesting campaign to save an historic locomotive going back to the early days of the LIRR before the suburbs bloomed on Long Island. He's Don Fisher, the president of the Railroad Museum of Long Island. And welcome to the show, Mr. Fisher. Thank you very much, Richard. Yes, you know, before we talk about the significance of this locomotive, maybe we should first explain what is the Railroad Museum of Long Island, where is it? Just tell us a little bit about what it is, how long you've been around. The Railroad Museum of Long Island is a New York State Education Department recognized museum. We started out in Greenport in 1990, and our mission is to represent and restore and try to maintain that history of railroading that helped with moving people from New York City out onto the East End. We see your facilities right here. Of course, look at that. That, that one looks like Thomas the Tank or something to me. <laughs> and you get kids love this place. You get tourists. It's been around for a couple of decades here. Uh, everybody on Long Island knows the Riverhead Museum of Long Island. You have another place too, right? Greenport's Greenport. where we started in 1990. And in 1992, uh, we picked up the materials and assets of the Engine 39 Restoration Committee fund at Riverhead. So we have two sites. We have our Riverhead site, which is our interactive museum site. Yeah, you can play with the toy trains there and ride the little choo-choo train. 58 <laughs> different accessories. You can ride the historic World's Fair train, Long Island Railroad G16. Okay. And our Greenport site is uh, kind of the... Uh, Smithsonian of our museum, if you will. That's where we have our fine exhibits, and that's where we have our artifacts on display for people to really get a feel for railroading on Long Island. Okay, and there are a lot of train buffs. I met them there. And, you know, one of the things that you, you said right away that I want to emphasize is you said it's part of your mission to maintain, retain, restore any means possible, right? So really the number one thing for you is not just opening the gates so people can come in, but finding a way to save these things, restore them to their original condition. Explain that. That's right. Uh, there are so many artifacts of railroading on Long Island that if we don't preserve them, if we don't save them, they're going to be lost and future generations are not going to be able to see how the island was built. Well, let's bring in what we're talking about. We also have a video of the steam locomotive from, I believe, 1929, and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, going back to cowcatcher days. Uh, uh, let's see here. There it is, right? Describe what we're looking at. Right there, you've got the frame and the running drive wheels of the lower part of this G5S engine 39 locomotive, and uh, that's equipment that has to be restored. The boiler and the firebox, where you actually create the fire, heat the water, which creates the steam to move this machine, is already down at the Strasburg Railroad Company at Strasburg, Pennsylvania, where they've rebuilt the firebox to FRA standards. Now, you mentioned the Pennsylvania place. That's where this locomotive's headed. They're agreeing to pay almost, well, I think, $2 million, I believe I saw, or, or quite more than a $1 million of the $2 million cost. And then you've got to come up with $900,000 to fix this up down there, and then it stays there for 48 years. Yeah, the folks back in 1979, 1980, that actually started this project had hoped to run this locomotive all over Long Island, from Jamaica to Montauk and out to Greenport. for decades to raise the money. 33 years this has been going on. And over the years, that organization went away. The Railroad Museum of Long Island came along, and we kind of lowered the scope and said, let's try and run this as an excursion train through the wine country and the North Fork Riverhead to Greenport. Well, it all didn't work out, and now you have this deal. So explain that. Do you think that local people are going to, because you've got to raise $900,000 for this to be shipped to Pennsylvania to sit out there for the next 40 year, eight years, even though it'll, it'll be running and people can go see it. you think local folks are going to contribute to a campaign like that? We hope so. We're looking out beyond Long Island for support from people who recognize the importance of this locomotive, not just to Long Island, but also to the Pennsylvania Railroad Company region of the Northeast. Yeah, some train buffs said, hey, look, I'll go anywhere to see it because I think it's more important that they restore the train. So really, you're looking for the out-of-staters to pay for this, especially people living in Pennsylvania who kind of feel like this train is connected to Pennsylvania's railroad anyway, right? That's part of it, but we hope to also have lots of support from Long Island and Foundation Report. There's a couple of things that play a factor in this current twist that we've got. 
We've gone to foundations over the last five or six years. One of the problems that they had that they saw was that there was no end game, nowhere to run the locomotive on Long Island efficiently. And yeah, it would have taken a million that. dollars more to fix it. So, you know, viably, everybody agrees this is the deal. The question is the people who love it that want to see it get fixed up will not have to go to Pennsylvania, but at least it will exist. Now, we're going to have to leave it at that, Mr. Fisher, or at a time, but uh, a 1929 steam locomotive that once uh, prowled uh, Long Island before the f suburbs took shape. We'll be following what happens to it. Thank you for joining us. And before we go, we'll take a look at what's fun to do in the week ahead.